Think of an endangered species. You may be picturing an elephant, a tiger, or a panda, but I'd be willing to bet that you are not thinking of a frog. However, amphibians like these are actually among the most threatened groups of animals on the planet, and it is estimated that the rate of amphibian extinctions right now is between 200 and a mind-boggling 45,000 times higher than it should be. That is not a joke, and it constitutes a full-blown crisis for these critically important animals. We ignore this issue at our peril, because the decline of amphibians is a stark warning of potential ecological catastrophes on the horizon that could affect all living things on Earth, something that it seems many people are blissfully unaware of. We have a lot of work to do to find solutions to this crisis, and today, we are going to give you the knowledge you need to join this fight. Ooh, hey, right here, right here. Got him. Nice. That was a close one. Hey, buddy. Okay. This is a balloon white-lipped frog. It's not a particularly well-known species, maybe not one that you've heard of before. It's a pretty abundant species out here, one that I'd expect to see a lot of as we're out here exploring the tropical dry forest. Now, we are here in Ecuador looking for amphibians. Now, the reason that these animals are incredibly important for us to study is because they're highly diverse. There are tons of species that exist here in the tropics, but also there are some of the most threatened animals in the country. They're super sensitive to changes in habitat, to climate change, and threats from all angles. So understanding how these animals are doing is really important to getting an overall sense of how the ecosystems here in Ecuador are faring in the face of these unprecedented dangers. I'm really excited that we got to start with this species. It's one that, like I said, doesn't get a lot of conservation attention, but we think that all amphibians deserve a time in the spotlight. So we're gonna let this guy get back on his way and start our mission to understand the real story of amphibians here in Ecuador. This guy's been a great sport. So with that, let's see if he'll just sit and hop away. There he goes. My name is Harrison and this is Evan. We're twin brothers following our dream to share the true life stories of the animals we love to help you become an insider in the natural world. Part of what it means to be an insider in nature is to understand the threats facing global biodiversity and our connection to them. But the plight of amphibians is extremely complicated, so first, we need to define the problem at hand. The amphibian extinction crisis is the ongoing phenomenon in which amphibian populations around the world are declining at a terrifying rate as research suggests that a third to over a half of all amphibian species are threatened with extinction at some level. Over 170 amphibians are thought to have gone extinct just since the 1980s when this problem was first formally recognized by science, and the numbers are only increasing. This is a significantly higher rate of extinction than normal, and here in western Ecuador, where only 2-3% to of the native tropical dry forest habitat remains, you can imagine that the future for these animals is not looking good. We have come to a place that gives us a perfect opportunity to examine how human activities are affecting local amphibians, as we are exploring not in a pristine wilderness, but on a highly developed agricultural ranch. There is actually a considerable diversity of frog species here, but because the diversity is so high, but the resources available for conservation are so limited, the wildlife of these disturbed habitats is critically understudied by science. And to illustrate just how considerable the knowledge gap is, most of the species here have never even been featured on YouTube before to our knowledge. Despite the lack of attention the region receives, one thing is for sure, the diversity of amphibians on the ranch is not lacking. And as soon as we started looking for frogs, we were quickly spoiled for choice. This is a fun little game. We have either a frog down here that I can grab, or a frog over here. There's either a tree frog or a ground frog. Which one? Uh, let's take a look at the tree frog. Tree frog? All right, cool. Wow, he is gorgeous. Take a look at that. Can you yep. see him on this cement pillar here? I am going to go for that capture. Go for it if you can. Got him. Nice. All right. Hi there. This is definitely a tree frog. You can see he is literally hanging completely upside down. Their ability to climb is absolutely unmatched. And when he's in that posture, he is getting ready to jump. This is absolutely incredible. This is a tree frog in the family Hylidae. He is absolutely gorgeous. Look at those stripes running down his body. 
It was actually the stripes that made the ID difficult for this individual because the pattern didn't seem to match the tree frog species we knew from the area. After doing some research, it turns out that this is the Sachila snouted tree frog one of the species that, to our knowledge, has never been featured on YouTube before, so we could not pass up the chance to highlight this beautiful animal. Now, he doesn't like the light. This is a nocturnal species, as with most of these amphibians, so he is just trying to get back into the darkness where he can actually see incredibly well because of those giant and quite cute eyes. Check that out. And just like a lot of the other amphibians out here, he is doing us a great service because he's eating a lot of the invertebrates that are moving around and bumping into our lights. We'll get a picture of him and then we'll get him back. But this is absolutely incredible. Check that out. He is right there. That was quite the jump, buddy. Look at that. Actually, I would love to take a picture just like that. Sure. So this is awesome. Now let's get into the meat of this issue. What are the actual threats that amphibians are facing? Well, the first thing you need to understand about these animals is that they are incredibly sensitive. And that has a lot to do with the very unique ability that they have. A lot of amphibians are able to breathe through their skin, so they're taking in a lot of essential compounds like oxygen and water directly into their bodies. And this is very useful for them, but it also means that any toxins or pollutants that enter the environment are also absorbed right into their bodies. So you'll notice that in a lot of the segments where we are working with amphibians, we're actually wearing gloves. And this is not for our protection, but actually to help the amphibians. Right. Even the natural oils on our skin can irritate these animals and make it hard for them to breathe. So you can imagine that pollutants that enter the environment would have an even more devastating effect on these animals. The contamination that comes from agricultural runoff and industrial operations and even just day-to-day -day life and human development can have extremely detrimental effects on amphibians. It can cause things like physical deformities, disrupt their hormone regulation, it can even stunt the growth and kill tadpoles and younger frogs. And the sensitivity of their skin also makes them very susceptible to disease. Amphibians are threatened by a number of diseases, but the deadliest of them is chytridiomycosis, which is a skin infection that comes from a chytrid fungus. So what happens when frogs get infected with this disease is it prevents them from breathing, from hydrating, from thermoregulating. Basically, all of the essential processes for life become almost impossible once this disease has taken hold. And what's particularly scary about it is that there's no known cure and no way to prevent it from spreading once it contaminates an ecosystem. Chytridiomycosis has been implicated in the decline or extinction of hundreds of amphibian species around the world, particularly in Central and South America. And to make matters worse, the spread of these diseases is made significantly easier by global climate change, which provides the perfect conditions for a fungal infection to spread. Getting into all of the effects of global climate change on wildlife would require a whole video unto itself. Oh yeah. And if you can believe this, everything we've talked about so far is just one type of threat that amphibians are facing. And to learn about some of the others, we need to find more frogs. We just flushed a white-lipped frog. I believe it's a Pimocha white-lipped, which is a species we haven't caught up with yet. And it is thinking it's camouflaged right under this piece of bark. Got him. Nice. Come here, buddy. All right. There we are. This is the Pimocha white-lipped frog. And this one is quite a fast-moving animal. They're primarily nocturnal, so we actually just flipped it under this cover here. Pimocha white-lipped frogs are pretty easy to identify because if you look at the legs there, they have that bright yellow patch. This is a species that has some level of toxin in its skin, and that coloration is aposomatic in nature. It's a warning color that would tell a potential predator that they are toxic if you try to eat it. And it's interesting because as we move around, particularly at night, we are seeing a staggering variety of frog species. And the truth is the studies are so limited that there's almost nothing known about these animals except for the habitats in which they live and the fact that those habitats are threatened. That is actually true of a lot of the amphibians here. But by getting these animals on camera, 
we can document the diversity that exists and hopefully get to understand what we need to do to protect these animals into the future. Amphibians are so diverse in Ecuador that this is going to be quite a difficult challenge, but I'm very happy to find a little animal like this because I imagine that the Pimocha white-lipped frog has never really had any time in the spotlight. And that is probably true of most of the amphibians we're gonna be finding. So we're gonna get this guy back, but I'm very happy to get to show off a beautiful frog that definitely does not get the attention it deserves, especially because so much of its habitat is being destroyed. Habitat destruction is one of the greatest concerns for wildlife conservation in general, and it's particularly complicated for amphibians because of their complex life cycle. Their lives are inextricably tied to both terrestrial and aquatic habitats because they start their lives completely underwater, but as they mature, they'll move on to land to carry out their adult phase. But they still need to return to the water to breed and continue this cycle, which means that a disturbance to either one constitutes serious habitat destruction for amphibians. Another thing to consider is that amphibians don't really have the ability to move away from a habitat if it's being destroyed. They're quite small and relatively slow moving, and because they're so sensitive to changes in environmental conditions and require both healthy land and clean water to survive, if they try to make large-scale movements, it can be extremely dangerous for them. Their biology just isn't suited for it. Now, there is still hope for these animals because they can be pretty resilient and adaptable. I mean, we're talking about a group of organisms that's been around for over 350 million years. They literally predated and outlived the dinosaurs, which I think is pretty crazy. And we got to see this adaptability on full display during one of our nights of exploring on the ranch. Wow, this is insane. Take a listen to what's going on behind me. I'll stop talking for one second. Hear that? All of those sounds is actually a frog breeding chorus. There are probably hundreds, if not thousands of individuals calling out to each other, trying to find mates in this field behind me. And what's interesting is this isn't a super well-preserved area of habitat. This is actually a holding pasture for some of the horses here on the ranch. And it's really interesting that the frogs are able to utilize this disturbed habitat for such a critical aspect of their life story, their breeding. You'd think they'd need a well-preserved area of standing water in order to perform these activities, but really all it takes is a little bit of grass and some puddles in order for them to start breeding in huge numbers. It really goes to show how resilient amphibians can be, even in the face of increasing destruction of their habitat. It's actually a pretty good sign that we're getting so many frogs breeding here on the ranch. It means that there are a lot of species that will be able to persist here in large numbers. This is an incredible place to be able to see so many frogs congregating at once. It's a really interesting find here on the ranch. We've talked about a lot of the threats that they're facing, but here's the real question. Why is it important to protect amphibians? Well, for one thing, these animals serve as mid-tier consumers, which means that they're prey for a lot of animals, but also predators for many others. So they form a critical middle link in the ecosystem that promotes the transfer of energy between different levels of the food web. The influence of this role really can't be overstated, as studies have found that a population of just a couple thousand frogs, which is a pretty typical number for a healthy tropical ecosystem, can consume tens of millions of insects every year. So it's clear that amphibians play a vital role in maintaining healthy ecosystem dynamics. Another thing to consider is that amphibians provide a lot of direct benefits to people as well. Right, and a perfect example of this are the advancements they've helped make in medicine. Amphibians produce a rich variety of toxins and other compounds in their bodies, and by studying some of these chemicals, scientists have been able to develop incredibly powerful painkillers, as well as treatments for strokes, various viruses, and even cancer. We are just starting to really develop this area of study, and there's no telling how many more advancements it could provide, but all of this knowledge will be lost if we allow amphibians to go extinct. Perhaps the most important point of all is that the protection of amphibians not only preserves themselves, but it also benefits all of the other life around them. Conservation management for amphibians requires that we not only protect the terrestrial and aquatic habitats in an ecosystem, but that these areas are clean and free of contamination. 
So when you have land and water that's healthy enough to support the most sensitive organisms in an ecosystem, all of the other animals that rely on that habitat can be supported as well. Though it's easy to forget with the complexity of modern life, humans rely on these exact same ecosystems. We get a lot of valuable economic and personal benefits from habitats like the tropical dry forests here in Ecuador, and we also depend on them for existentially important processes like oxygen production and the capture of carbon from the atmosphere, which reduces the impact of global climate change. This is really the true meaning of being an insider in the natural world. We share the same planet with our wildlife, and we all benefit when it's healthy. So by protecting amphibians, we're also protecting ourselves. If you want to continue to deepen your insider connection to the natural world, check out this video, where we teach you a trick to use observations of birds to gain fascinating insights into the world around you. And if you want to see an example of just how prolific amphibians can be, check out this video where we challenge ourselves to find as many salamanders as possible in a very unusual location. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.